Hello students, how are you all? Today's topic is flotation, the rules of flotation. Let us start with an example. Say, I'm giving you a football and uh, I'm saying you immerse this football inside water completely, completely immersed in water and then you leave. What will you observe? You will see that that football is coming up and is floating. Now I am giving you an iron ball. But much smaller than this. This size. Football is the size of the football is this, but I am giving you a small iron ball. Fine. And I am saying you put it means immerse in water and leave. What do you see? That will come up. No, that will go down. So we see that some objects are floating, but some objects are sinking. Why? Some will float, some will sink. Now what is the funda behind it? That is the rule of flotation, which we are going to discuss now. But before discussion of all this, we have to know a term which we call Force of buoyancy. What is force of buoyancy? See, when you are, when you are going to immerse the football, then when you leave, then football comes up. Why? Because water is or any liquid gives an upward force. That means that liquid is not giving upward force to that iron ball? No. All the objects will get an upward force from liquid. Any object, even you, if you go inside water and if you jump, you will see that you can jump there very easily you can jump. By using less force you can jump. You try it once. You understood what I said? When you are going in water, say this much water you are standing, the water level is this much and you jump, you will see that by using a less force you are jumping because the water is already giving you an upward force. That upward force is called buoyant force or force of buoyancy, got it? And the direction of force of buoyancy is always upward, means a liquid wants to make you out of that liquid. Understood? So, if the liquid is able to make you out of the liquid, then you will float. But for some object, liquid is not able to make you out of the liquid. That means you will sink then. So, flotation and sinking, float or sink, that depends on force of buoyancy. Say, you are placing an object. So this is the object which I am placing in water, on the surface of water. And we saw that that object is going to sink. It is getting down. That means the force of buoyancy is less than the weight of this object. You understood? If the weight of this object is W, is W, then this weight is greater than the force of buoyancy. If B is my force of buoyancy, which water is giving. Got it? So if the weight of the object is greater than this force of buoyancy, that means the object will sink. Now if your weight is less than force of buoyancy, means force of buoyancy is more than the weight of the object, then the obviously the object will float. Okay? If this force of buoyancy is equal to the weight of the object, understand my point? If the float, the object is, the weight of the object is equal to the force of buoyancy, then you can place that object in any portion of the liquid, inside down, up, wherever you are keeping inside the liquid, the object will remain there. Neither it will go down, neither it will go up. 
Understood? This case. Now in this case, it will sink. This case, it will float. You got my point? Fine. Now, force of buoyancy. How this force of buoyancy will work? We will uh, now we will discuss more about this force of buoyancy. What is this force of buoyancy actually? How will you measure it? Weight you can measure. Weight you can measure very easily. But uh, uh, actually, we have got uh, uh, instrument, a spring balance by which we measure weight. Yeah, we know that. By using a spring balance, we measure weight of an object. Now the question is that how do you measure this force of buoyancy? To measure force of buoyancy, it's very easy. See, say you are taking this container, and this much water is there. This is water. Now you are taking this ball, and you are going to immerse this ball inside water. When you have immersed the ball inside water. what you will observe you will see that the water level is going down no the water level will go up yes so when you have immersed the ball the water level is going up so i can say that this much water was displaced because of this ball understood i repeat this much water initially the water level was this but after immersion the water level is here so water level is increased this much water level is increased now what is the weight of this much water what is it what is the weight of this much water that is the force of buoyancy understood so if i can calculate the weight of this water then i can calculate the force of buoyancy acting on this object and i told you this is always in upward direction that's why you can see i have given arrows here force of buoyancy now the question is that how do you measure the weight of this much water yeah it's very easy to measure this weight we use this formula weight equal to mass into gravity Understood? Weight equal to mass into gravity. We know this formula from our lower classes. Now, mass means volume into density. Yes, mass is volume into density into gravity. So you know the volume of this this much water. Now, how do you calculate the volume of this water? What is the volume of this object? That will be the volume of this displaced water. Understood? What is the volume of this ball? Calculate it. That is the volume of this much water. This much water. So volume you are getting. What is the density of water? Put the value here. What is the value of gravity? Put it here. So by using this formula, we can find the force of buoyancy. So how do you find the force of buoyancy? By using this formula. Volume into density into gravity. What is the volume of this ball? Put it here. What is the density of water? Put it here. What is the value of gravity? Put it here. You will get the force of buoyancy. So in this way, you can calculate the force of buoyancy. If force of buoyancy is less than the weight of that object, the object will sink. If you see that force of buoyancy is more. then weight of the object the object will float if you see that force of buoyancy and the weight of the object equal exactly equal that means the object you are placing the object inside water anywhere and the object will remain there got it so these are the cases this is the first case second case and third case of flotation you understood Thank you